Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do some home decor projects and we're gonna be using supplies from the Annie's Creative Woman Kit of the Month Club. I'm gonna show you how to make these fun placemats and napkins. I have never done ombre dyeing before and it was so fun and I am so pleased with how they came out. And then we are going to do a centerpiece project. We've got some wooden letters and icons so you can swap out the O icon for whatever season it is. So that's a lot of fun too. I'm going to share some tips and tricks and the best part about these projects that I'm going to show you today is that you can do them too. Now you can sample the best crafting has to offer. You'll experience an amazing selection of crafts and materials. Try the techniques and create beautiful projects the easy way with Annie's Creative Woman Kit of the Month Club. Everything you need except basic supplies like scissors and glue, along with full color step-by-step -step instructions are delivered right to your door about every month. With every kit, there's something new to learn, like painting, needle crafts, paper crafts, jewelry making, soap making, mosaics and decoupage, candle making, and so much more. And you can get your first kit for only $9.99 plus postage and processing. You'll save 50% off the regular price. So are you ready to try one of these or two of these fun projects with me today? Well, let's go to the table and get started. The first project we're going to work on today is the hand dyed napkins and placemats and um, you get everything you need except for a plastic spoon and the bin of obviously to um, to dye your project in uh, in the Annie's Creative Woman Kit of the Month Club and you also get a, an instruction manual that you can always keep for future projects. If you really love this technique you could keep a binder with all of your um, projects in them so that you can refer to them later. Uh, there's three different options that you can do but I really loved this uh, kind of ombre dip dyed look and I thought it was pretty because it looked almost like an abstract winter landscape so I thought it would be kind of nice to have this time of year. So what we're going to do first is mix up the dye and I've got a half a gallon of warm water here that I'm going to pour into my bin and this is just a um, this is just a dish pan and this is the dish pan I use anytime I need to dye anything and I just you know make sure I wipe it down um, after and before any project just to make sure there's no residual ink or dye in there. You want to put on your gloves before you do any sort of dyeing because um, it'll stain your hands. And if it does happen, then oftentimes the next time you wash your hair, the dye will come out. Or you could use like a lava soap or something with a little pumice in it that can get out that stuff. And also wear old clothes and protect your work surface with some paper so that you don't uh, stain anything up because things will probably splash a little bit. So now I'm going to pour the indigo dye into the water. You can see it activating already. And I'm going to stir it up with this plastic spoon. It's a good idea to use something um, that you have only for art purposes or that's disposable for this. So that way you don't have to worry about getting any chemicals into your um, food that you cook with or your, your pots and pans you cook with. Although a lot of people do their dyeing with, with like stainless steel pots so they can just heat up the water on the stove and whatnot. Um, just make sure you give it a really good clean. Plastic's a little more porous so I'd be a little more careful with that. So that's why I'm using an old just a plastic spoon. Once you have that all stirred up and you can see there's no more residue in the uh, in the water and everything's dissolved, you can prepare your fabric. So what you're going to do is take your fabric and you're going to fold it. So um, I'm going to just move this bucket out of the way for a second so I don't end up getting like dropping it in the uh, dye. So what you're, oh, and I had some dye on my, I must have had some on my gloves. So you want to be careful about that. Uh, make sure your hands are clean before you do this. Actually, I would do all this before you started the dye, which I did with my other pieces, but I wanted to have some to show you. So you're going to fold it in half twice for the placemats. You want to fold it so um, you have it, this is the width way you're going to be dipping one side in. So through the whole length of the placemat, you're going to have color. And then you want to do the same to the place, to the uh, napkin. Just fold it in quarters. And I think this is a pretty artsy uh, technique so that, and I have the other ones already folded, so even if you do get a little stray dye, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. So then what you're going to do is take your folded cloths and you are going to dip them into the dye and hang the, um, the rest over the edge. So that's why you kind of need to fold it so you can fit all these pieces in the um, in the dye at one time and because we wet the fabric beforehand I had all wet fabric here um, and all of that information is in your uh, brochure that you get it'll tell you whether you want to work on the fabric dry or wet um, since we wet it before it's actually going to help wick up the um, the dye here and if you want it more blue than white you can 
put more into the water. If you want it less blue, you can drape less into the water. So I've never done this before, so I'm doing about the bottom third into the dye, and I'm leaving the other two thirds kind of out of the dye because I, I think it's going to wick up about halfway up the napkin if I do that. And so we're, we are going to set this aside and let that, let that uh, kind of soak in a bit. The longer you let it sit in the dye, the stronger the dye is going to be. And I'm just going to quickly look at my, take my, my gloves off and look at my brochure and see how long they want, me, want us to soak that for. I love that they have really clear and uh, concise directions. It says let's sit for 20 minutes. So um, after that, we're going to be doing like a just a load of wash by itself, wash it, dry it, and then they will be set to go and you'll see the finished project. I thought this next project would go really well with the dip dyed napkins and this is a decoration. Now you got the word home and then for the O you have a winter, spring, summer or fall um, icon that you can use for the O in the word and I thought this would be really pretty as a centerpiece with our napkins. So the first thing you need to do with this project is to gently sand them. Now these actually came very um, very smooth but I think the edges you might want to get well just so that your paint will go on smoother. So the first step is you just want to go through and sand all of your pieces. To get the acrylic paint ready to use, you're going to flip your cap over and you're going to push that point into the neck of the, um, the tube. So I'm going to squirt out most of this black. I'm going to leave a little bit in there for detailing and touching up. And I'm going to go ahead and start base coating my letters. Um, and in the brochure, it'll tell you how to paint each of these different um, icons. If you want to paint it just like they did, or you could use the supplies from your own stash, like patterned scrapbook paper, and you could do your own thing. Um, just try to give it a really nice, even coat. And um, if you did have larger brushes on hand, you could always use use that to get the larger areas done. But these uh, brushes included are great for getting the details and also for kind of getting in those nooks and crannies. Um, and they're perfectly suitable for coating the um, base coating all of the items as well. I personally just like a bigger brush, so I'll probably switch over to that in a minute. So go ahead and base coat all of your um, all of your pieces. If while you're base coating, you realize you want to have a distressed edge or you want to just kind of get a, a variegated tone to something, you can go ahead and do that right into the wet paint like I'm going to do for this birdhouse. I'm just going to kind of drag with long, smooth strokes some of this white paint in here. And I want to do that while the paint's wet. That way I'll get a nice blended kind of a shabby chic look. Another thing you can do after your base coat is dry, if you want to have a distressed look, is go back to the sandpaper and um, sand some of the paint off the edges. Again, that's completely up to you and what you like for your decor. After your base coating is dry, you can go in and add either additional coats if your objects need it, or you can go in and add the other colors that your design might require. So here I am doing a layer of brown over my layer of gray for the acorn. Now I want to show you this because this is um this is kind of important with the design. Half of this is the cap and half is the nut of the acorn. So an easy way to do that is to make a curved line. And I think a curved line looks a little bit nicer than going straight across because then you get that um, feeling of the acorn being rounded. So um, I know in the, in the pattern in the kit, it has it going straight across because that's easy. But, um, but if you put a little curve on that line, it's just going to be a little bit more realistic using uh, looking and I think they probably just do a straight line because um, if you've never painted before you know they want to keep it as easy as possible but I know you can handle it so just a little curved line is going to make it look a lot more realistic and a lot more rounded. Now if I want a subtle look, I will go right into the wet paint with my overlay color like I did here because I just wanted kind of a tone on tone look to the top of that acorn and I'm going to show you how I did it. So this side is still wet, so I'm using my round brush and I'm dipping it in the paint and I'm giving it a little twist so I can kind of make a little bit of a point. And then I'm going to put my first line about an inch in from the edge and I'm going to go right up to the edge of that um, the um, uh, little stem there. And I'm going to have to reload every time because my brush is going to pick up so much of the, the extra paint. Unless I'm just doing a really, really uh, short line. 
I don't want to go into the stem. I'm going to stop short. And then I'm going to start from the end of each of these stems, and, or each of these lines rather, and draw my little lines out. And I could put one more up there if I wanted to. But you know, just try to keep it um, like that, and then it's tone on tone. If you decide you want them darker later, you can do that by going over with another coat of the gray. Don't be afraid to try something new whenever you are working on a craft project. I thought it'd be really fun to use a stencil I already had to make this flower. So I'm going to start off with some of this blue. I'm just going to tap it off on my paper that I have protecting my table. And I am going to... I'm just going to stencil on this little stencil I have in my stash already. So you could do any sort of like doily stencil or... Um, or flower stencil, anything like that that is kind of has a round design that want to look really nice. I'm going to grab some of this white. And hopefully this looks cool. I have no idea how it's going to look, but I think it will be kind of fun. And my kitchen's blue, so that's kind of why I wanted to do this. The, uh, the pattern in the kit was like to make your own black and yellow design, and I really didn't care for that so much. I did miss a little spot, so I want to touch it up. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make it so it matches my kitchen. There we go. And then I thought it'd be cool to, instead of using, um, instead of like painting a center to use some punches. So I have a couple punches right here that I just got from some scrapbook paper and I'm just going to glue those down. I think I will kind of like maybe darken the edges of my flower here a little bit first or my little scallop circle, and then just glue it down. I think that would be super cute. And then once that dries, I'll do it to the other side. If you want, you can distress the edges, or you could cover it with a little trim if you wanted to. For the snowflake, you are going to want to brush a generous coat of glue or Mod Podge, whatever you like to use as an adhesive. Make sure it's one that dries clear, or I guess it could dry white since your snowflake's white. And you want to give it a really good coat, and then you are going to sprinkle on your glitter. You're going to have to do one side at a time, so I try to get one side and the edges done. And then when you do the other side after the first side's dry, you'll be able to um, touch up any edges that didn't get that much sparkle. So uh, I'm just carefully trying not to, I want to make sure also that because I have paint on my fingertips, I want to make sure that I don't stick my fingers in any of that glue or the paint will stick to the glue and um, get on my snowflake. So you probably will also want to wash your hands before you begin this. Now you want to work on a piece of paper or a plate or something like that where you can collect your glitter to make sure you have enough. And then you're just going to use the glitter that comes in the kit and sprinkle over that. Oh, it's so pretty and shiny. And that way, since you're working on some paper, you're going to be able to collect whatever glitter you don't use for the other side. Because you're probably going to end up dumping all of it just to get the one, ed one side and the edge. Now something else I wanted to show you really quick is my drying rack that I made. And what I did was I took two pieces of foam core and I stuck a bunch of straight pins in it, like sewing pins. And then I can set anything that I have, um, that I'm drying on there. And the only thing that's going to touch are the tips of these rounded head pins and, uh, or sewing pins rather. And they don't stick and they don't leave a mark. So that's how I made my drying rack. I use that anytime I have to um, work on on like small it painted of things like ornaments uh, so I don't end up kind of messing up the paint while it's drying. After you're done putting the glitter on one side you want to just want to gather up the glitter on your piece of paper and try to dump it back in the bag as best you can. It might even help to fold it a little bit and that way you'll have plenty for the other side of your project. You might even have some left over for another project. There see all that I was able to collect. No need to waste it. Here's a tip for making a perfect circle on your birdhouse. Remember the uh, punch out that we used for this? Well, I had used a paper punch. This is the one I have right here. I used that paper punch to punch out that yellow circle for my flower. And I thought, you know what? 
that would be a perfect stencil. So what you're gonna do is just take the cardstock or pa pattern paper that you punched your circle out of and line it up on your house and then use a makeup sponge or a stencil brush, whatever you have to stencil on the brown paint. And that's the easiest way to get a circle. And voila, there we have it. And then set that aside to dry. I didn't worry about painting the roof perfectly because I'm actually gonna find some uh, scrapbook paper to decoupage that area. I decided I wanted a rustic look on these letters, so I'm gonna show you how to distress these really easily. And don't worry if it doesn't look perfect because the less perfect it looks, the better it's gonna look. So I'm using a fan brush and you probably have one of these around the house. If not, any old uh, kind of scruffy brush, maybe a brush that's seen better days, will work really good for this technique. What you want to do is just get paint on the bristles, just the tips of the bristles, and then you're gonna dab off any extra. And then um, I recommend you practice on the edges of the letters because um, that usually the edge grain is gonna be a little bit rougher, so it's not gonna grab that much paint anyway. So that will just kind of give you a feel for how much to press with your brush. And this is really fun to do for any sort of decor project that you might have. Maybe you have like a wooden box that you're painted, painting or, or something. I'm just tapping, reloading and tapping off. Um, you know, something where you just want to do a little home decor piece. This is a great technique for that. Then I like to lay this flat down and you can kind of see the distressing that I have there. And then I just lay it flat down and I just drag the brush across. You can drag it across uh, the opposite way as well and catch your wood grain a little differently. But you basically want it to look kind of like it's been um, sitting in an old barn and just getting kind of weathered and, um, you know, just kind of neglected over the years. That's what we're going for, kind of worn and weathered. You can also use sandpaper to sand back the black, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. But I just love the, um, I love this. It's a little bit easier than sanding for me. Um, and I think it gives you a really nice result. So there's that. Just like with our flower, we're gonna do some decoupaging on our roof here. And what I did was I just took a scrap of pattern paper and just cut some strips that are about a half inch wide. And I am going to make um, a little, uh, just a little roof, basically. Just wanna cut them to length. And if you want, you can distress the ends so that you have, um, so that they're a little bit more, um, you know, rustic looking, but that's completely up to you. I think that actually looks pretty good just the way it is, but if you feel like you want a little darker on there, you can. And I'm gonna use the same glue that I used for my snowflake to get the uh, glitter on there, and I'm gonna give it a coat. What you wanna do is you wanna put that on the um, the area you, where you wanna glue it, and then you also want to put it on the back of the paper that you wanna glue. This is just a basic decoupage technique. On the, um, we used like a thicker cardstock on the flower and just hot glued it. So this is gonna make sure that we get a really good bond here. Cause you really wanna make sure that's gonna seal down. And then you're actually gonna go over the top of it with another coat. I'm actually gonna try this over on this side because I think I might've cut this piece for this edge. I'm not sure if they're any different, but there we go. I'm gonna snip a little bit. I have it a little bit long there. And then we're gonna do this one right here on the other side. And then I'd probably follow up and give the entire piece a coat of, um, of the same glaze, the same Mod Podge. That way you'll have a uniform sheen all the way. And then you'll just repeat that on the other side. Now you don't have to match it. I think the more mismatched that you get, the more um, kind of boho or uh, country theme you'll have. So just make it match your decor in your home. 
Once your wooden pieces are dry, you can display them wherever you want. You can put them on your table for a centerpiece or put them on your mantle. They're going to be cute wherever you decide to display them. I wanted to go in really quick and tell you how to finish your napkins and placemats. It's really easy. So you can uh, let the dye set um, longer than 20 minutes if you want a darker color. You can actually pull it out of the water a little bit more or out of the dye a little bit more and get the ends a little darker if you want to. It's completely up to you or even submerge them a little deeper and get a wider band of that middle color. So um, you play with that technique, leave it in, um, I would say probably about up to an hour. I probably wouldn't go any further than that. And then once you're decided that you have dyed it as dark as you want, what you want to do is rinse the napkins and placemats under cold water. And what I do is I actually hold it so I've got the lighter color up top near the faucet and I'm letting the water roll down it and that way it's going to pull the dye out and it's not going to backwash onto the uh, the white tops or the light colored tops. Once you see that the water's running clear then what you want to do is just do a small cold load of laundry in your washing machine with uh, regular detergent just a little bit though, or you could use wool light if you had that, and uh, just wash it and dry it as normal, and then you're going to want to press it because it will be wrinkly, especially if you don't dry it all the way. Um, you can starch these if you want to. I starched a couple, but then um, my spray, so I've never starched a thing in my life, let me tell you that, but my, my can of starch, which could be like 20 years old, I don't know, uh, just clogged up, so it doesn't really need starching. I, I did for some of them. I can't really tell the difference between the ones I did and didn't, but, uh, but I would give them a good press that first time uh, because the heat from an iron it just gives you a little added benefit of locking the dye into the fabric so just it gives you a little extra security plus it's gonna look really sharp when you put them out on your table and you can impress everybody with your fancy dyeing skills I want to thank you so much for watching today if you would like some more information on how you can subscribe to the Annie's creative woman kid of the month club and it's not just for women anybody can join and uh, how you can make fun projects like this I will put a link in the video description so you can check it out get your first kit 50% off so um, you can try it with very little risk and uh, it's a lot of fun. I've enjoyed the projects that I have gotten from their Kid of the Month clubs. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like it. And until next time, happy crafting!